Olivia, um, we get the benefit of all your experiences in government on the show, but I, I, none, I imagine, is more searing than knowing that we didn't have to be here. Joe Biden didn't have to end his day today paying tribute to 500,000 Americans who died from COVID. Um, it's a pandemic, but our response is abysmal, the worst in the world. You were on that task force. What are you feeling today when you see a new president, um, as Claire said, unleashing, um, Sarah Palin might use the word unshackling, uh, the scientists, letting that drive policy um, and stay out of the way and, and do the presidential parts of this. The flags will be lowered. Um, we will have that opportunity. The second one, he, he held a memorial service, a national memorial service the day before he was inaugurated. Um, and this is the second. Yeah, I, I think it's twofold, Nicole. It's, um, I agree. Still, it's not something that I carry lightly with me, I have to say, having lived a lot of the response firsthand and knowing what happened and how different uh, it could have been and the fact that it didn't have to be this way and the fact that we, you know, the medical experts on the task force and everybody I worked with were concerned that the numbers would be this high if it didn't go the way that they recommended and all of that. And so it's hard. And I'm glad that uh, President Biden is actually taking the time to remember um, the loss and the suffering that many Americans have felt and the families out there who have felt this firsthand, as well as the medical community who has been at the front lines, right, responding to this every single day, doing everything they can. But then I feel hopeful as well because I'm grateful. And I'll tell you what, I'll never take for granted what the power of elections and change can do when you get the right person in office with the right tone during a crisis, because that really matters. And we've lived this firsthand. And I'm grateful that we have someone that's willing to trust the science, who's willing to give these doctors a platform to speak and to be transparent, because transparency is key, especially in a situation like this. Um, you know, I wasn't sure if I was gonna get a chance to play this, but you just set it up perfectly. I have, because I was on the air when it happened, um, Dr. Fauci's very first public briefing um, after President Biden was sworn in. Let, let me play it because I think it illustrates this point that, that you and Claire are making beautifully. Today, can you talk a little bit about, about how you feel uh, kind of released from, from what you had been doing for the last year? Yeah, but you said I was joking about it. I was very serious <laughs> about it. I wasn't joking. Um, no, actually, I mean, I mean, obviously, I don't want to be going back you know, over history, but it was very clear that there were things that were said, uh, be it regarding things like hydroxychloroquine and other things like that, that really was an uncomfortable because they were not based on scientific fact. I can tell you, I, I take no pleasure at all in being in a situation of contradicting the president. So it was really something that you didn't feel that you could actually say something and there wouldn't be any repercussions about it. The idea that you can get up here and talk about what you know, what the evidence, what the science is, and know that's it. Let the science speak. It is somewhat of a liberating feeling. Claire, it cannot be overstated just how subverted science and good policymaking was by the, you know, 30,000 pound lying gorilla in the room. I mean, to stand at that podium, and as you've all said, it, I watch the briefings every day. Um, they're, they're not, you know, glitzy, but they're, they're, they're chock full of information. I sit there with a pen. I have to Google words. I don't understand all of them. But it, this is what was supposed to happen. And it's really no use looking backward. But I think the frame around which Biden is judged for hitting all these marks, and he set out pretty ambitious goals for vaccinations, pretty ambitious goals for getting kids back in the classroom, to think that where he started was a place where Anthony Fauci couldn't speak freely is mind boggling. Yeah, you know, it, it, they're pretty nerdy, these briefings. <laughs> um, they're not bam pow television, but they're really important. They're important in terms of resetting the nation to a place where we can begin to have confidence 
that what we're hearing is just not all about political and narcissism. And, you know, I got to tell you the truth, Nicole, I think back of some of the on some of those Trump briefings. And of course, I remember when Fauci buried his head when Trump was going on about hydroxychloroquine. And then I remember, of course, we all remember what happened when Trump very seriously talked about injecting bleach. Now, well, I'll tell you what, what makes me sleepless at night. He got like 74 million votes. Yeah. And he said that we should look into injecting bleach. I mean, that's how far down the rabbit hole our cr- country went. And that's why everybody needs to be patient. Joe Biden's not going to be able to restore normalcy in just a few weeks. It's going to take a while to get back into the rhythm of not having everything through the prism of one guy who wants to dominate it like he's some kind of reality TV star, which turns out that's all he was. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.